So you start a social media company with your friends while attending Stanford University back in 2011. That social media company ends up going viral and generating millions of active users. And just four years later, you become the youngest billionaire in the world at the age of 25. Today, we are talking about Evan Spiegel, the billionaire Snapchat CEO who just dropped a cool $120 million on a home in Los Angeles, California making for one of the most expensive residential real estate deals the city has ever seen. This is not the first big real estate purchase by Spiegel and his model wife, Miranda Kerr. They currently live in a $12 million home in nearby Brentwood, California, and just last year, they dropped over 30 million bucks on a mansion in Paris. With a net worth of around $2.7 billion as of the last report, something tells me that this won't be the last time we hear about Spiegel spending big money on real estate. So the house that we're talking about today never officially hit the open market, plus it's technically not even done being built yet, but today we're going to dive into as much detail as we can about this record-breaking buy. As far as the location is concerned, the big 120 million million dollar purchase is for a house sitting on this roughly three and a half acre lot at 10231 Charing Cross Road in a neighborhood on the west side of Los Angeles called Homebly Hills. You can see both on Google Earth and on Google Maps that there is a ton of construction going on and that is because this house is in the process of being rebuilt for the new buyer. The neighbor property that you see here by the way that just kind of looks like a parking lot, Evan Spiegel also owns this one. He paid $25 million for that lot in the summer of 2021, probably in anticipation of him eventually buying the neighboring home. This means that between the two lots, Evan Spiegel has spent $145 million for a home for him and his wife to move into that isn't even finished being built yet. Wow. Now the backstory on this house and how this whole transaction came to be starts back in 2014. This is when the billionaire Ian Livingstone acquired both of these neighboring properties. He bought one in 2014 and then the other one in 2017. He paid 72 million bucks for the pair. Over the following years, Livingston worked on a rebuild of the estate. It's estimated that he spent tens of millions of dollars on the rebuild, but now he's handing it over to Evan Spiegel and his wife. Unfortunately, there's not much for photos on what the house looks like today, but I found the old listing from when this house last sold, and this gives us a sense for the general shape and size and scale of the place. It looks like a two-story with a flat roof and kind of boxy architecture. Compare that original home to the construction images that we do have on Evan's place today, and it's definitely the same old house house still standing. It looks like they're just adding a new facade, of course, a big swimming pool right here, and then the entire back section at this point is still just dirt. My initial thought on all of this is that somebody spending $145 million on a new home for themselves would want to start from scratch and build just something brand new. But I bet you a big selling point on this place is the fact that the construction is so far along. I mean, if Spiegel found a lot and wanted to start from scratch with a new design and a new build, it would take them a minimum of five years to see that thing come to fruition. Going back to look at the location, the comps around here definitely support this high sales price. This is a killer neighborhood. Immediately across Charing Cross Road, you have the infamous Playboy Mansion. This place sold back in 2016 for $100 million, which was about half of what Hugh Hefner was asking, but still a great comp to have right across the street from Spiegel's new house. Then right next door to the Playboy Mansion is another famous house known as the Brody House. This one was bought by Ellen DeGeneres a while back for 40 million bucks, then flipped over to billionaire Sean Parker for $55 million not long after that. Like I said, Spiegel picked a pretty good neighborhood to call home. It is so hard to even wrap your head around somebody who has a net worth the size of Evan Spiegel. I mean, with him being worth around $2.7 billion, that means that through interest and investment returns and dividends, he can probably realistically bring in around $100 million per year for the rest of his life and never even touch the principal of his net worth. I guess being a billionaire means that it really is no big deal to drop $145 million on a California mansion. You can drive all the fancy cars that you've ever dreamed of. You can own your own private jet to travel the world in and a mega yacht to unwind in. And at the end of the day, you'll still have plenty left to take care of your loved ones, pass money down for probably an endless amount of generations, and hopefully also contribute to some charitable causes that are important to you. If you 
enjoyed the short episode today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below or leave a comment. That really helps the channel out a lot. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see ya.